Hey everybody and welcome back. Today we have a classic from Cat Stevens. I'm going to show you how to strum through the easy chords. I will tell you what you need to know if you want to play along with some great cover versions, such as Rod Stewart's version and Sheryl Crow's version. And I'll definitely show you those great introductory arpeggios that kick off Cat Stevens' original version. They sound like this. The intro arpeggios are built on two different chord grips, and if you haven't used these two chord grips before, especially up the neck, you're going to really find a lot of uses for them in the future. Uh, the overall pattern of the intro goes G, D, C, D, but it's not G and D and C down here. The G chord is actually what feels like a D grip up higher with a nice arpeggio pattern. I'm doing a downstroke on the third, a downstroke on the second, and then up on the first, and up on the second. So when you see a G on the screen, that's what it represents. The next chord, the next grip, is a D chord, but check it out. Five on the first string, seven and seven on the second and third strings. I always use my ring and pinky. I've seen people reach up with their middle and ring. To me, that feels like a lot of work. My ring and pinky seem to fall there nicely. So there's your D, glide backwards two frets for C, and then back up two frets for the D and the whole thing begins again. So there's the pattern uh, of the arpeggios in the intro, G, D, C, D. That whole pattern happens twice, and then the song kicks in. Now, the arpeggios continue. I'm gonna show you how to strum the chords uh, for the uh, verse, but just so you know, when you see a G on the screen or a D on the screen there, that's really what's going on. It's the arpeggios that are going on. If you happen to be playing with another guitar player, it sounds great for one person to do the arpeggios and the other person to strum the more conventional open position chords down here. Now, that's what we're going to do in a moment. But just so you know, that's what's going on. Arpeggios on these higher versions, these higher voicings of G, D, and C. Okay, now let's get into strumming through and singing the verse. Now, before I get started with the verse, I want you to know that to play along with Rod Stewart's version... You take everything you're about to learn here and you capo up uh, to the fifth fret. To play along with Cheryl Crow's version, everything stays the same but with a capo at the seventh fret. Okay? So, we're going to do the original Cat Stevens right here. All right. Two strums per chord uh, until the very end. You'll see what's happening at the very end. Uh, two strums per chord. I'm holding the pick lightly. I'm doing nice light downstrokes. Okay? Emphasis here is on the singing, on the performance, right? We're not trying to do any fancy guitar playing. Here comes. Two, three, I would have given all of my But there's someone who's torn it apart And she's taken on each day that I But if you want to try again Baby, I'll try stays on that D for eight of those strums, okay? Now, I know it seems really simple with the right hand, but I'm keeping it simple because let's work on getting your left hand changing chords fast enough. If those chords are a breeze, you're all set. That's excellent. By the way, a couple of little quick details. You notice I was playing G with my middle ring and pinky? It's a great time to do that, okay? Because of the times in the song that go from G to C. Do you have to do that for this song? You don't have to, but it's a method of playing G, of fingering the G chord that you want to be good at. Okay, uh, in a moment, I'm going to show you that cool little riff that happens right at the end of the verse, right before the chorus kicks in. So again, if you're playing with another guitar player and one of you is strumming those Ds at the very end, what's that, eight Ds at the very end? There's a little riff that's going on in the Cat Stevens original version. I'm going to show you that riff right now. Here's how the riff fits in at the very end of the verse. Baby, I'll try to love again, but I know. And that leads right into the first G chord of the chorus. We'll get to that in a minute. So what I did there was the two Gs, the two Cs, just one D, and that puts my middle finger on the right note to begin the riff. A little hammer on. And then that same hammer, hammer on again. Ring finger. Pretty straightforward, right? But it adds a nice touch to the song. 
Okay, now let's finish this up with the chorus. So here we are at the chorus. I want to say thank you for watching, everybody. Please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel where you can find lots more videos like this one. And don't forget to check out my website, Songbike, for lots of videos like this one that are not on YouTube. Okay, so the chorus, piece of cake. Uh, over and over again, you're just going to see G, D, C, D. Two strums on each until the very end. But I'm going to walk you through it right now. Maybe you can play along with me. Two, three, four. First cause the extra time on the C at the end there, a little extra time on the D, and then you're, you're back to the next verse of the tune, okay? Easy, right? Let that be a lesson to all of us, that you can write a great, timeless song with only three chords. You notice that? G, C, and D, three chords, right? You can do it too. Hey, thank you, Cat Stevens, for writing a timeless song, and I will see you for another classic song tomorrow. Thanks for watching, everybody.